The scripture of this message is Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. Enoch lived 65 years and became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Methuselah, and he had other sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, now let me talk about Enoch, the seventh generation from Adam. The record about Enoch in the Bible is short, but its lesson is so great. The first is that Enoch lived the life of walking with God even on this earth, and second is that he was taken up alive. The Bible tells us about Enoch a little differently, unlike most others. That is, God walked with Enoch. God walked with him for 300 years. In the Bible, there is no one else that God walked with. God walked with Enoch. And he was taken up alive without seeing death. This is a special case. There are only a few in the Bible such a case as this. Only these two facts are enough to explain how great the forefather of faith Enoch was. Just as the Second Timothy 3.16 says, all scripture is inspired, inspired by God. Now, when God inspired the recorders of the Bible, He emphasized different aspects of the forefathers of faith. For example, He put the stress on faith when talking about Abraham. For Moses, it was about the life of a leader recognized by God. God emphasized the uncompromising faith of Daniel and how David became a beautiful vessel after he passed the refinements with his love for God. Through Elijah and Apostle Paul and other forefathers, God explains how they understood the heart of God and how much they loved God. Then what is it that God wants us to learn from Enoch? It is the fact that God truly loves one who is of goodness without evil and that God wants to have him close to him. The Bible says, Enoch lived 65 years and then became the father of Methuselah. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years. And then it says, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. He was taken by God, and he walked with God for 300 years. And God took him when Enoch was 365 years old. The Bible says he was not for God took him. He was not for God took him. By his time, the average life of a man was over 900 years. Therefore, Enoch lived only for one-third of the lifespan of those of that period of time. As I said before, God took him when he was young. Because God loved him so much, He wanted him to be with him beside. So God took him earlier. If we, you know, uh, convert Enoch's age, 365 at that time, it's the time of young adult today. Without seeing death, Enoch was taken up to heaven alive. Hebrews 11 verse 5 says, By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death. And he was not found because God took him up. By faith, Enoch was taken up. It is the same for those you know, who have faith these days. 
people with faith never commit sins. That they really don't like sin and evil. They don't do unless it's goodness. Just as, you know, I mean, if anyone slaps them on the right hand cheek, even due to a you know, false accusation, they rather turn the other. They don't sue or argue and say, why are you doing this to me? They have goodness in their hearts. So they want to forgive them, even though they are blamed for others' faults. So how pleased God would be to see this kind of heart of goodness. But the world of flesh isn't like that, to that today, you know. Worldly pick up rather in the regard those as cowards and saying that you don't have any righteousness or pride. But that's not what God wants. They get slapped. You know, and give up things away to others, not because they don't have pride, but because they have goodness. For he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. The witness of being pleasing to God is faith. Only by faith one can please God. No one who has faith will commit evil. He won't do evil in any case. Even if he is falsely accused, he will never harm anyone. As said, Enoch obtained the witness that he was pleasing to God while he was living on this earth. And so he was able to walk with God even on this earth. First, let's see what it means to walk with God. Walking with someone is accompanying someone. Accompanying someone. What does it mean exactly that God walked with Enoch then? Does it mean God Himself came down to this earth, stayed with Enoch, and taking Enoch's hand and having chit-chatted with him? Having chit-chat? Of course not. It rather means God always communicated with Enoch while he himself guided Enoch's life. While he himself guided Enoch's life. God always communicated with Enoch. If you come into whole spirit, you can always communicate with God. God is in a concern in every single thing in your life. Why? Because He loves you so much. As He communicated with Enoch and guided His life, your life can be led by God. Okay? Your life will not be led by you. So everything you do, it will prosper. But it's more than that you know, when God is always with you and leads everything. God is with you. That's natural, isn't it? During this time, God taught Enoch much spiritual knowledge. He vividly revealed the facts about God the Trinity, about the providence of human cultivation, and about the secrets of the spiritual realm and heaven. He also told him about the future. For example, in Jude 1 verses 14 and 15, Enoch prophesies about the things that will take place at the end of human cultivation. It says, It was also about these men that Enoch, in the seventh generation from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with many thousands of His holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly of all their ungodly deeds which they have done in an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against Him. And of all the harsher things which ungodly sinners have spoken uh, 
spoken against him. By that time, Enoch already knew that the Lord would come in the air on the last day of the world. While he communicated with God for 300 years, wouldn't God have let him know everything? Enoch could learn this fact as he communicated with God clearly as he walked with God. Besides, Enoch could see the image of God from time to time. And this fact implies two things. First, just as when God came to Adam when he lived in the Garden of Eden, God would also come to Enoch as a separated spirit. God inspired the heart of Enoch so that he could feel as if God were with him. And God explained specifically to Enoch about God's image that he had never talked about to anyone. God revealed everything about himself so that Enoch could even draw the image of God only if he had wanted to. The fact Enoch saw the image of God implies, secondly, that he could see the original image of God like Moses did. In Exodus 33 verse 18 and on words is recorded God's explanation about how he would reveal himself to Moses. In Exodus 33 18, Moses said, I pray you, show me your glory. Then God replied, Exodus 33 verses 20 to 23 says, But he said, You cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Then the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and you shall stand there on the rock, and it will come about while my glory is passing by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. You shall see my back. Though Moses, too, communicated clearly with God, but he couldn't see God's face directly, but only his back. This took place before two years had passed after the Exodus. That is, it was before Moses became complete. As Moses stayed in the wilderness for 40 years, he became more humble and faithful. As he led millions of people, he could understand more of the depths of God the Father's heart and completely resembled Him. What was he like physically after he finished all his duty and ended his life at the age of 120? He was acclaimed that Deuteronomy 34 verse 10 says, Since that time no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. Compared to when Moses had just got out of Egypt. You know, he changed a lot. You know, more perfectly, you know, after 40 years of living in the wilderness. This is why we can see a difference. So first of all, you know, Moses could see only God's back. But after 40 years, he came, I mean, he became more gentle and good, resembling, you know, God. Like this Moses, Enoch was also able to see God face to face. Of course, he couldn't see the face of God from the beginning. As he walked with God for many more years than Moses did, he could gradually become closer and closer to God. Only after he was close enough to God did God show his face to Enoch. By the way, the difference of emotion between when Enoch saw God like this and when he was in the bosom of God as he was taken alive was so great. 
It will be the same for us. We can greatly feel the love of the Father in the inspiration of the Holy Spirit on this earth. But how great will our emotion be when we directly see the Father in heaven? Regarding this, the 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. As dim as in a mirror. When you look at the mirrors, does it look dim? No, you can clearly see your face. But it said, we see in a mirror dimly. It's because in the mirrors 2,000 years ago were not as clear as the ones of these days. That's what it says. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. If you go to the dwelling place in the third heavenly kingdom or higher, you can directly see the faces of God the Father and of the Lord. Revelation 21 verse 3 and 4 also says that God will dwell among them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself will be among them, and He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. You can see the face of God the Father, however, only in a condition if you become a true child that is sanctified and pure in heart. Pure in the heart. While on this earth, you should cultivate your heart into spirit and whole spirit. Otherwise, even if you are saved, you will only end up in the first or second kingdom of heaven. If you get shameful of salvation, you will go to paradise. If you are a little better, you will go to the first or second. When you don't cast off the flesh completely, it means you still have sinful natures and evil in you. You haven't, uh, you haven't cast them on cast them all off. But to the extent you throw them away, according to your faith, you go to different dwelling places in heaven. If you cast them off completely, you go to the third kingdom of heaven. When your heart becomes clean without any blemish or spot, you come into whole spirit. And you enter New Jerusalem. So only if you are a true child with a pure and sanctified heart can you see Father God's face. And if you can pursue sanctification and peace with all men, that means you got no evil. Because you got no in hatred and you forgive in the, even the person who hates and insults you, you can keep peace with them, right? In addition, those who pursue peace with all men can see the Lord. Enoch was more than qualified enough for these conditions, and so he could walk with God on this earth and see the image of God from time to time. Dear brothers and sisters, how does God walk with us in these New Testament days? Among the triune God, He can walk with us as a separated spirit of the Holy Spirit or of the Lord. In John 14, verse 17, the Lord said, He, the Holy Spirit, abides with you. The Holy Spirit abides in us, not separately. The Holy Spirit has come into our hearts and stays there, just as in a, tem in a temple. So we shouldn't get you know, our heart you know, profaned. Believers' hearts are temples where the Holy Spirit abides. So, our hearts should not be defiled. We should cleanse our hearts. If we do, so will our ideas. Then no bad or defiling thoughts can come into your mind. You couldn't, you know, you cannot condemn or judge others. If we have sanctified our hearts, ideas of good, you know, come into our mind. If we have gentle and in the good hearts, we think with goodness and gentleness. We should be you know, like this. How wrong it is for believers to have filthy ideas in their hearts and to condemn and judge others. 
Ways of believing life were taught, you know, many times at this church, but there are some who didn't obey. So the Bible says, the Holy Spirit abides with you, and will be in you. I said, you know, Holy Spirit dwells in us. The Holy Spirit abides with us, and He is also in us. Mark 16 verse 20 says, And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them, and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. The disciples went out and preached the gospel. When they did, our Lord worked with them. And He worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. When the disciples preached the word of the Lord, signs followed. And thus, it was confirmed what they preached was true. It was confirmed. What they preached was the word of God and of the Lord. Today, to confirm what is preached, signs should follow. It means the Spirit of the Lord was with His disciples when they preached after He resurrected and ascended into heaven. Then would the Lord Himself come down and stay with us? This verse means the Spirit of the Lord was with them, so those whose eyes were open can see that. Then the sight that confirmed the word followed. The Spirit of the Lord was with them and confirmed the word by the signs that followed. Don't we see signs every week through you know, testimonies? Likewise, when the Lord is with you, the signs truly follow. What did I say? is the lesson that God wants to give us through Enoch. It is that God truly loves the ones who are of goodness with no evil, and God wants to have you know, these people close to Him. May you possess much more beautiful heart of goodness through this message about Enoch. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Hallelujah! Almighty Father God of love, please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries, and all the GCN TV viewers, and those who are watching via satellites, cables, and the internet all over the world, transcending space and time. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities, go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. Be cleansed and made well. All epidemic diseases such as colds and fever go away from them. Protect them from any kinds of germs and viruses and bacteria. Heal them of all kinds of cancers like stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer, and all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's diseases, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis, and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes and the deaf come to hear and mute begin to speak. Heal them of after effects of all kinds of accidents. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns 
and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Father, please bless them to conceive a baby. Bless them to conceive a baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, you evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bonds of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in their prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their home, their business and their work by the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit with the heavenly host and angels and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I've met God, I've experienced God, and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. How does God work with us in the New Testament days, the age of the Holy Spirit? Among the triune God, He can work with us as a separated spirit of the Holy Spirit or of the Lord. When the Lord works with you, a whole different level of works will follow. Let me explain two things at this point about how Eno was able to come into spirit and whole spirit. First of all, Enoch enjoyed storing of goodness. The fact that Enoch was able to work with God when he was 65 means that the whole goodness he stored up just reached the full measure.